Any other members of the committee? Seeing none, I move over to visiting councillors. I believe I had Councillor Nicholson's hand up first, and then Councillor McConkie. No. Um, with respect to Councillor Garbus's comments, I, I, I think he could not be more wrong. Um, animal services is now in the void. Animal services is currently, as we've made no decision at Council, is currently under threat because there was a staff recommendation to terminate and move animal services to the Humane Society of Durham Region. Yes, we have received a letter from the Humane Society, and I thank them for that. But in that letter, it says it wants to keep negotiations going forward. We need, as a committee and as a council, to let the people of this city know that there are three steps that we're willing to undertake today. And these, the wording of these motions were, were put forward very clearly. Part one, that all current investigations, and I want to stress this, into reducing or eliminating the current service levels at all general services be terminated. That does not preclude any improvements. It does not include any efficiencies. It doesn't preclude any expansion. What it precludes is reducing or eliminating the current service levels approved by this council two months ago in our budget. We need to give the people of this city an assurance that we are no longer involved in a process to reduce or eliminate current service levels at Oshawa Animal Services. That's a bare minimum. Secondly, if we're going to get a buy-in to a future review, we're looking at ways to continue to fund uh, and support the operations of Oshawa Animal Services, we can't have this coming up every year during budget and having to come back and fight this battle. We need an assurance from this council that this council is on record as committing to fully funding the operations at no less than the current level. Doesn't mean council can't improve. Doesn't mean council can't fund more. It just means we're not going to go below the levels we establish right now for the remainder of this term. It does not preclude us from investigating any options. It doesn't preclude us from looking for better ways to provide service. And in fact, I think it opens the door to a, a more involved participation from the community and the animal groups in our future of the National Service. But you can't investigate a future if you have to come back every 12 months to fight for survival. Now, we can't go beyond the 2018-22 term of council. I wish we could. I wish I could make this simply put a period after word service and just let the city know that we're going to have a national service for a long time. Legally, I can't do that. So at the very least, if we're going to get confidence back in our system and our processes, we have to give a commitment to what we can do, which is to commit to the rate of this term. And we must also absolutely learn from this process. We must ensure that any future review of service levels up, down, or sideways must include public meeting, must include a process for public input, and the public has to be involved in step one of the process, not simply passing judgment at the end of the process. Now, if a member of council later on wants to look at other motions, as Councilor Neal suggested one, I've suggested it's time to reactivate our Animal Advisory Committee so that we can get a buy-in from the community to, to move forward on animal issues. I think that's a bare minimum. I would urge this committee, under other business, to add those items, start the process towards getting a, a proper understanding and a proper partnership. Um, it's amazing to me, and I've been around a long time, that in a matter of three weeks, over 10,000 people in the city of Oshawa have petitioned this council in support of a council operation. 10,000 people plus have written to us or signed petitions saying they love our service, they support our service, they respect our staff, they respect our intent. The only message we should be sending out of this meeting is one, thank you for your support, and here's the minimum guarantees that we're going to give you. And if we can do even better, we'll do even better. That's the bare minimum. How are you, you vote on this? I, the only way this is going to go away, the only way that we're going to have a buy-in from the community to again have the confidence in our systems moving forward 
is to give these guarantees. And I want to state for the record, this is not about a counselor. It's not about a group. It's not about a, a city staff member. It's not about even a report. This has to be what's best for the animals in this community and the best way we can send a message to the, those who care about the animals in our community is to continue OAS, keep funding it, making it better, building on the strengths we've done for the last four to five years, and be the beacon that we said we were going to be. Thank you, Councillor Nicholson. We're over to Councillor McConkie, please. Thank you. I fully support this motion. It's absolutely needed at this moment in time. There's no void. This void is empty space. We had a, a full council uh, chamber here this morning, and if there was a void, it was caused uh, with that April 1st uh, report. But uh, it, it absolutely must be passed today. Um, and I just want to take this opportunity, as it was mentioned, this has been a learning experience, I believe. And I'd like to continue the learning experience because I think this is the only opportunity I have to ask staff questions on this particular issue. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so I did have a, a question uh, I had posed to a delegation who actually read this motion. The public is very aware of this motion that's coming forward. I, I and that understand. delegation, I asked um, specifics about the... Um, Dr. Snap, and if the City of Oshawa is actually uh, taking advantage uh, of y using that assistance program, are we? Through you, Chair uh, Kerr, uh, we do not utilize Dr. Snap, but we do refer people to him, residents. Um, Mr. Diskey, I understand just from the glance of the documents I saw there on, on Google, it's not one doctor, it's a, 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 a program where local uh, veterinarians are engaged in uh, lower cost. I don't know um, if there's a chance we could get a report on if, because what I read was Clarington's using this program, if uh, we could actually get uh, someone on committee to maybe investigate further if there's any chance of uh, filling a gap at this moment in time to see if there's a... Uh, Council, what's your question then, please? If there's an ability to actually investigate further on this Dr. SNAP program. Thank you. Commissioner? Through you, Chair Kerr, uh, I can have staff provide uh, Council with information on this program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other members? Uh, Mayor Carter. Morning once again, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, so um, I see that all three items will be divided for, for voting purposes, so I'd, I'd like to address all three of them. First of all, I'd like to say that I have to commend <clears throat> those um, individuals that were empowered by um, social media and uh, the campaign in regards to getting their voice heard and, and uh, really using social media in a way that really empowered people. So to the community that cares so much for animals, congratulations. I'm also disappointed on the social media campaign because there's been things that have been said that are miscorrect and that there's been personal attacks on members of council and also uh, me as the mayor. And I understand that that just comes with the job and I understand that that's frustration um, and that's part of today's world. Social media adds us a, a plus and a minus and, and we take it as it comes. Um, so I, I'll work the same way I think that Councillor Guyverson addressed this, which is absolutely that Number three, any further review of service levels in anything that we do here at City Hall. I believe that um, we must include uh, the public in regards to their voice and really look for improvements, service improvements, and their input. I think that that's what today's world expects. And I think that you heard me in my inaugural address that um, open and transparency has to be a part of the, the path that we create, and that means the public has to have a voice. So I was really glad, not only this morning when I saw people in the parking lot, but out front, and then our gallery full today, I was really glad to be able to say the public wants to have a voice, and, and they did a really good job at it. So I agree with that 100%. Um, the, number two, that the Council of the City of Oshawa commits to fully funding operations of the Oshawa Animal Services. I think that that's, that's pretty well said. I mean, I think that there, there's always been a commitment to make sure that $752,116 has been allocated uh, towards animal services. I think, um, I don't believe that uh, even in the proposal uh, that originally came by from the Humane Society, there was um, not the commitment of, of fully funding uh, the services of care 
and of, of animals in our community. So I think that that's, that stands for itself, that we have to make sure that if we're doing it, if somebody else is doing it, that fully funded, we don't starve a service to death. We want to have the best services possible. And if that means that it costs 800000 or 900000 or a million dollars, if that's what we're committing to, that's what we have to commit to. So we have to make sure that that happens. And the, the, uh, the first point that, that, you know, that uh, many members have talked about is, is the investigation process. You know, we sat here for almost three months debating the debate, uh, the budget. And I heard time and time again from every member of council that they wanted to know efficiencies that were undertaking, what kind of initiatives were staff taking to be able to look for lean mythology, looking for improving services, decreasing costs, uh, looking at increasing services in every department. Um, there was discussion about staff levels. There was discussion about service levels. There was discussion about allocation of funds. I think it's really important that we always take that into consideration. My worry is, is that we start doing these one-offs of saying, okay, we won't touch this, but we're going to look at everything else, will really get us off, off track. I think the staff have been charged with the duty about looking at efficiencies and looking at ways of making sure that we have the highest services available in every department across the city, higher than anybody else in, in the province of Ontario. And I want our staff to understand that we support them in regards to those efforts. So I... I, I um, I know that uh, we'll be dealing with um, the withdrawal of the Humane Society uh, letter. My worry is I, if, if we uh, fully support this motion, does this box us in? And I, I want us to look at how do we improve services. You've already heard that another uh, initiative is going to come forward. So does that mean that if we uh, adopt this, that that initiative uh, would, would be put on hold until 2022? Uh, what other initiatives, like the spade-neuter uh, program, would that be put on hold? Because I, I think that that's a, a commitment of almost $3 million. So, you know, I, I appreciate, um, again, as the public, I appreciate uh, those that were out there writing letters. And the bottom line is we want to have the best care and services for our animal services in, in all of the province of Ontario. And we also want to make sure that we deliver um, value for dollars. So, so that's my position, sir. Thank you, Mayor Carter. I have Councillor Guyberson, please. Thank you. I just wanted to follow up on a few um, few thoughts that were uh, expressed. Um, the motion, the first pieces of the motion, um, you know, these are, and actually before I say that, I, I do want to make mention of something that I've said numerous times on social media since that's been brought up that I would never support anything that would result in the actual reduction of animal welfare in our city. Simple as that. Um, you know, there's, uh, there are, um, you know, different discussions about funding and types of programming offered, but the bottom line is if anything that, that comes before this council would, would mean the reduction in actual animal welfare in the city, I wouldn't support that. Uh, and uh, that's, re you know, regardless of it, uh, you know, being something in the confines of Oshawa Animal Services or agreements with other organizations, to me that is my bottom line on, on these questions. Making a commitment, and this is, this, it, it may be helpful to point this out, and uh, Mr. Chair, and, and perhaps for the benefit of members of the public as well. I alluded earlier to an analogy between, uh, you know, feeling as though something that comes back as a report or a recommendation that sometimes the perception is, is it's this straight path of travel like a basketball from hands right into the, the net and in, in truth it's more like a, the way things work in our municipality with all sorts of recommendations especially ones that are more complex uh, and require more input it's more like a pinball machine things move all over the place they go back and forth from committees to staff up to council back down again it gets you know Reevaluated as public consultations, things like that. Now, uh, and that was my intention in moving the referral back to staff to produce a public document so that it would become easier for the public to provide input. It's much easier to provide input on something you can actually see uh, than on something that you can't. But just in terms of referencing, as I did, the, the, the reality that. Uh, you know, in practice, things move all over the place in committee and staff and, and things like that. One thing in terms of, you know, in terms of our procedural realities in our city, 
a council can move a motion to, uh, to, to lock ourselves in with these two items, and this is why I refer to it as dropping it into the void. We can move those two mo parts of the motion, but we have a mechanism for reconsideration in our procedural bylaw. And if a council so chooses, they can revive something at any moment. Does that give us any more certainty when that is actually the reality of our procedural bylaw? So we can pass these parts today and as a way of you know, signaling and waving a flag and saying, uh, you know, this is the flag we're going to wave on this. But that doesn't actually give members of the public that ironclad guarantee that it is that it's trying to be painted in the picture here. Uh, what you really need, if you want guarantees in terms of animal welfare and service delivery, is something that is actually going to rely on the you know the, hopefully the good faith of your elected representatives on an ongoing basis. The it, Passing something like this is not a guarantee of that. Any council can turn around, or year to year, can turn around and, and decide to, to uh, change their mind on something. And has your voice really been heard at that point? Is it, is, it, is it more certain at that point? I would prefer a fulsome dialogue and then hear from people, understand what the needs of the community are, do full assessment, and then maybe decide to not change a thing. But then we have something to actually, we have ground to stand on at that point. Right now, there's no clear ground to stand on because, as has been mentioned, uh, a, an offer could come again uh, to, uh, to the city. Then where do we stand at that point? The council could then choose to move a motion saying we want to reconsider the decision of uh, April 23rd or whatever the council meeting would be next week. And, and then as members of the public, you're no further ahead. You, you then revisit the exact same question that was put in front of you in April of 2019. Passing this motion does not guarantee that whatsoever. All it does is it provides uh, a sort of a signal and says, hey, here's where we're at at this particular moment in time. I would rather, and I actually quite like the suggestion of the Animal Advisory Committee. Uh, I think that that's, uh, I, that's something that is probably missing from the picture. I'd be happy to, to move that motion later in the meeting. Um, you know, including something that's formatted where there's, uh, you know, inclusion of major stakeholders who are out there doing the work in the community. Uh, right now, we don't have any mechanism for that. As it stands right now, there's no mechanism to have ongoing input uh, from, from advocates in the community who really care about this issue. Uh, it's just a, a, a case of suddenness, really, with, with what we're dealing with right now. Um, so I would prefer to create a proper public input process that, uh, that that ensures and again if if we get into the habit of passing motions and this refers to something that mayor carter mentioned that i think is a very very valid point that he's making if we get in a habit of passing motions that say we are going to fund this service or that service for the duration of a council term uh, that's a that's a really bad precedent to set as a council uh, because it it will mean that we're going to start you know the moment that someone is unhappy with uh, any particular direction, if we pass motions like that and then that becomes the norm, whether it's, you know, community advocates coming out to voice their concern about something uh, or council members starting to, to address concerns over funding levels for different programs across the city, if we start to move in that direction and set that precedent, it means that that will become a trigger or a mechanism for anything where people have variances of opinion and then suddenly it becomes, well, if we don't send this signal, then we could be called in, you know, our credibility of commitment could be called into question. That is our responsibility with each yearly budget to make sure that we are acting in good faith as a council and not pinning ourselves in once in a while just on the basis of uh, here's a way of placating rather than actually dealing with uh, a concern that many members of the community are concerned about. Thank you, Councillor Guyberson. Councillor Gray. <clears throat> okay, it's time for some tough talk. Back at the council meeting, we could have dealt with this. It would have been closed. The council decided no, they didn't want to close it. So let's not be stupid again. Let's get this thing closed. And this spin that we, it's only going to take two, a reconsideration. But what's a reconsideration? It's two-thirds vote. Are you actually going to get eight votes next year so you can gut animal services again? 
please get this issue closed. We've got other big issues to deal with this city. And we don't need to revisit it next year or the year after when somebody has a grandiose plan that got it again. Please, let's just put closure on this. It's only till 2022 if you have an agenda again. And the new council, they can, yes, they can do whatever they want. But please, get it closed now. Don't be stupid again, because that's what we did before. And I just implore you, get this thing done. Give them Sorry, some peace and quiet and not have to be worried all the time that council's going to come up with some other draconian measure. So that's point of personal privilege, but using the word stupid directed at other members of council is completely inappropriate. Tough luck. Okay, let's, uh, let's recall that we are going to have a respectful climate in the council chambers this morning, and I would like to ensure that we move forward on that basis. Thank you. I appreciate both sets of comments. We're going to move forward in a respectful manner. Uh, Councillor Neal. Yeah, and like my comment on this was what I said at the beginning. I am totally against closing animal services, totally. And I think we have to move forward in a positive way with the wishes of the residents. They're here today, and they've been with us for years. They just didn't come and appear today. I asked the question to a number of people that came up to make delegations. They've been here for years. They've been working with uh, the councillors and the committees in a very respectful manner, and they are very respectful today. Very respectful. But, and honestly, I don't know how they're even doing it to, uh, to sit there and to know that a really good uh, facility and staff and the staff and the management have been working for years to improve a system and we're just going to get rid of it. So uh, with all due respect, let's do the right thing here today and let's move on because these are good motions. They've been well thought through and the only option that this council has is to go with the wishes of the people. That's why you're here. Other than that, I question what our job is. And I've asked that before. But I'm going to say here and now today, it's been asked for a recorded vote. We have lots of issues on the table and lots of issues at the region. You know that, Mr. Chair. And we have to move here today in a positive way. And a positive way is to uh, say yes to these three recommendations. And I'm going to bring one further uh, to enhance uh, Oshawa Animal Services under other business. But Thank right you. now, right now, we have to do the right thing. And the right thing is to put a close to this, end it today. Thank you. Thank you for your input, Councillor Neal. Uh, visiting councillors, have Councillor Nicholson. Yeah. I'm going to be respectful of my comments, but I'm going to say also it's time for a little tough love that Councillor Gray was, was right on. We get our mandate from the people of this city when we run in elections. We tell them what we believe in. We tell them what we're going to do. We don't ask for a blank check from them. It says, uh, throw me in office and I'll do whatever I want for four years and then I'll come back and ask for your vote again. I said it publicly, I'll say it again. Any member of this council that campaigned in the last election to say they were going to close Oshawa Animal Services wouldn't be sitting in this chamber today. Wouldn't have happened, wouldn't have happened. So if you want a mandate to close animal services, go back to the voters in 2022, state publicly that's what you want to do, and get your mandate. But in the meantime, the people of this city have made it clear in massive numbers that they want Asha Animal Services to be retained at no less than the current level of service. If that means we can make it more efficient or we can make it better, then we absolutely can do that. Mayor Carter said he wants to make sure we have our hands free to investigate any way to improve our system. And he's right. But the only way to do that is to pass his motion. The only way you're going to be able to get trust in the system and get the buy-in necessary from the public to have a cooperative approach is to say to them, look, 
we're going to learn from this process. We all agree it probably wasn't handled as, as best we could have. It's no use looking back and saying, you know, we want to take a, a chunk out of each other as to why it happened or what happened. If we truly care about the animals and doing what's right, we have to move forward. So we have to give the public an absolute assurance that when you vote in a couple of weeks' time at Council, that if you vote for number one, that you say you're not going to support any investigations to reduce, that that's, your, your word means something, that your vote means something. You're not going to reiterate, uh, bring this back in in reconsideration at eight months later or 24 months later. You're given a commitment. And if you really believe what you just said, that you give that commitment, then you give that commitment. And you do it with a vote, and it's recorded, and it's in the minutes. And then you stand behind that vote for the remainder of this term. And you don't bring anything through the back door. And you don't bring anything, you know, through the side door either. That you have a process that says if you're going to look at reviewing service levels under Part 3, everyone said they're in favor of Part 3, and the public has to be involved. The scenario that was brought forward about reconsideration doesn't involve the public. So either you support 3 or you don't. So my point is, let's go on record. Let's tell the citizens of Oshawa that we've learned our lesson as a group. We're not going to blame anybody else. It was our error. Councillor Neal moved a motion to the table this. It was voted down. <coughs> Councillor Gray moved a motion to get further information and referral. It was voted down. So why aren't the people a little upset when you start voting down motions and then starting to tell them, well, let's not worry about those motions. They never happened. Well, they happened. They're in the minutes. And the motion that was sent back wasn't to go back and revisit the entire matter and come up with a better plan. It was simply to separate report into a public and a private section and bring it back. And what was brought back, the public got to see exactly what was being offered. And they got even more angrier. So we have to end that anger. We have to end that mistrust. And the only way to do it, and I say this respectfully to all my colleagues, the only way you're going to do that is to support all three of these motions, put them on record. They do not tie your hands in any way, shape, or form, but they give a public commitment and a public assurance that you're going to stand behind your vote. And if you're not going to stand behind your vote, I'd much prefer you just vote no and get it on record. Councillor McConkie. Thank you. Um, I'll reiterate, this is the right thing to do. These are the right motions, if we've divided it now into three. Um, several of us visited uh, Oshawa Animal Services early on a, in this uh, term, and we saw what a great facility it is. Yes, like any building that the city owns, it will need improvement and money spent. But um, to hear today that these motions would placate the public, I'm sorry, we were elected to make those hard decisions. And when the decision is right, when we know that we're on solid ground, that this is where it should be, that's what we do. There's nothing, whether this room is filled to capacity more than once, that's going to change my mind. I believe this is the right thing to do on this issue. If this council is filled to capacity on another issue, that I'm opposed to the public that are, you know, clamoring about a certain issue, you go with what you know is right for the city. And on this one, to hear the word placate, I'm sorry, this is, again, if I can say it the last time, this is the right thing to do. We have, as we've heard so many times this morning, Oshawa Animal Service is the gold standard. We, are, we should be very proud of what we have. Yes, we need to invest money always in our services. There's nothing here that limits that or reformulating you know, improvements that are public in the process. But there you go. Said it all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor McConkie. Any other comments? Mayor Carter. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Every time I come into this chamber, um, I believe this is a place of respect, and I try and demonstrate it when I'm in the chair or if I'm a member of a uh, committee. I'm going to encourage that this is day 141 for this current uh, rendition of City Council, and I'm going to encourage all of us to once again pick up bylaw 44-2018. And what that is is our code of conduct. 
And under Section 10A, we are reminded that each member has a duty and a responsibility to treat each member, not only of council, but also public, in a very respectful way that using indecent, abusive, or insulting words or expressions towards one other, either the public or a member, is not appropriate. So I'm going to encourage all of us to once again visit that. Um, the second thing is, is that uh, many people have talked about what they heard at the doors. And since it was brought up, I think it's important to be able to do so. As uh, Councillor Gray knows, when you run for the mayorship, you hit a lot of doors. Um, in our circumstance, it was about 33,000 households that we, we visited. The number one issue was taxes and affordability for the average family and really what's happening in regards to the affordability factor. Number two was improving services in our community to make sure that they felt that the taxes that they were getting, um, they were also getting the best services that were available across Ontario. Number, number three was, was really the, the, the talk about jobs and number four was safety. Um, I can say that 33,000 doors that I knocked on, at least 32,900 of those doors had dogs. I know that factually because I got to meet most of them, um, which is an experience uh, uh, for a candidate going to the doors. So I know all of us do. Um, but those were the issues that came forward. And I've always kept those first and foremost in my mind about, you know, the affordability factor and what what the public is asking us to take into consideration. So I know this is a difficult situation. I know it's there's a lot of passion that is behind it. Um, I think that um, you know when we take everything into consideration, we have to do our due diligence in regards to making sure a the public is involved. B is that we're always looking for improvements to our service to excel our services, not decrease our services, and that we always have to remember that the affordability factor on the average taxpayer must be taken into consideration. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other comments? In that case, I have some closing comments on this issue as Chair. I would like to focus on three items. One is uh, regional efficiencies and municipal efficiencies, which came up in our discussions last week with respect to the government investigation or examination of regional government and municipal government and it was quite clear that it was felt by members of this council that we should always be mindful of reducing duplications and improving efficiencies for the taxpayers benefit that's the first thing the second thing is that um, with respect to the last four years and and a, a notion that we want to bring forward a citizen committee on animal welfare. Uh, I'd just like to remind people that my, uh, I was the counselor who working with members of the Animal Welfare Committee formed the Oshawa Animal Care Committee. It was a citizen committee. We worked hard for three years and we formulated ideas that we brought forward to staff and that improved the welfare of animals in this city. So that committee is on stasis mode right now. Why? Because when we got a change in management at the Oshawa Animal Services, we had a meeting with the new manager and it was suggested that the ideas that were to come forward on the Oshawa Animal Care Committee website would be perhaps better delivered by being on the Oshawa Animal Services website. There was an agreement and since that time, some terrific things have happened at Oshawa Animal Services. And it's not just due to that, it's primarily due to the staff down there. Everybody understands that. I don't think there's any debate in the room about that. I'm a huge supporter of animals. But the third point, and this has not been raised, and if it has, it's been raised only, in, only tangentially this morning, and that is the responsibility of staff to investigate any and all proposals or opportunities for the effective and efficient delivery of city services for the taxpayers' benefit. You can't handcuff staff and you can't handcuff council. What you can do is provide for an open, transparent process 
that examines each and every proposal as it comes forward. Each and every proposal will not be approved. Um, I can say right now, I would not have approved of the HSDR proposal. I didn't think it was good enough. In fact, it's been withdrawn. But well, that's not a debating issue today. So Oshawa Animal Services is good to go right now. But what may happen in future is there are other municipalities looking at efficiencies with respect to their animal services. And there is a consideration that a joint effort might be put forward with interested municipalities to examine those efficiencies on a regional basis. And if not all municipalities are interested, then two or three might be. And if that's the case, then the taxpayers in those municipalities may be ahead. And as long as the animal services are either kept the same or my preference would be improved significantly. So that's what's missing is that third piece. And to just say that, you know, this is off the table, we're not even going to look at any proposal for the next three years, I don't think, excuse me, I have the floor. I don't think is following a council mandate and a staff mandate was to do their best for the citizens of Oshawa. So what I'm suggesting is that to handcuff staff and council with item two, that's my view on it. Um, do I want to see animal services, Oshawa animal services cease to exist? Absolutely not. Did they do a great job? Absolutely they did. And if no other proposal comes forward, we have Oshawa Animal Services on the go. That's not a question. That's a statement. So I am going to um, move to the vote on this issue. I believe a recorded vote has been called on by Councillor uh, Neal. Excuse me, could I have a clarification? Yes. Uh, you mentioned motion two, handcuffs the city. Could you elaborate on that? Because I don't see any handcuff in number two. What, the, what it basically says is there will be nothing done about this regardless of any other proposals that might come in until 2022. That's, that's what I'm sticking to. Sorry, my I don't see order. those words. That's, that's my comment from the chair. And those are the closing comments. Point of order. Yes. You are saying publicly in a meeting that is being recorded and web streamed that you interpret the English language different from any other person on the planet. I'm not saying okay. it's any other person on the, the planet. The wording says clearly, commits to fully funding the operations of the Oshawa Animal Services at no less than the current Correct. level of service. Correct. It does not handcuff council. It doesn't stop our staff. It doesn't do anything but say we are not going to reduce or eliminate services for the remainder of this term. So I'm not going to cross the beach on your this, way out of this. What you I'm saying is it's my position that I was speaking to the position of staff's responsibility in this, and it's their responsibility to seek out ways and bring forward any proposal brought forward within the community that seeks to enhance city services. And there's nothing in this motion that stops from doing that. You have got people trying to spin that to justify a no vote. You are wrong, sir. No, English okay. language is straightforward. I'm not going to cross debate you on that. I'm entitled to my view and you're entitled to yours. I've spoken on this. Councillor Neal, you asked for a recorded vote on each of... Sorry? Councillor Gray? I beg your pardon. I thought it was Councillor Neal earlier. Councillor Gray has asked for a recorded vote on, and Councillor Guyberson requested division. Uh, we're now going to call the vote on item number one, that all current investigations into reducing or eliminating the current service levels be terminated. When you're ready, Madam Clerk. Councillor Gray? Yes. Councillor Marks is absent. Councillor Neal? Yes. Mayor Carter? No. Councillor Guyberson? No. Councillor Kerr? No. Lost. That item lost. We're on to the second item, that the Council in the City of Oshawa commits to fully funding the operations of the Oshawa Animal Services at no less than their current level of service until the end of the current 2018-22 term of Council. Recorded vote has been called for. Councillor Gray? Yes. Councillor Marks is absent. Councillor Neal? Yes. 
Mayor Carter? Yes. Councillor Guyverson? Yes. Councillor Kerr? Yes. It's five affirmative. Item number three, that any future review of service levels at Oshawa Animal Services must include a specially called public meeting to provide for public input into the review process. Councillor Gray? Yes. Councillor Marks is absent. Councillor Neal? Yes. Mayor Carter? Yes. Councillor Guyverson? Yes. Councillor Kerr? Yes. That's five affirmative. Thank you.